Hey there and welcome to yet another one of my cheesy YouTube videos. My neighbor called me and they're having problems with the hydraulic cylinder on their old John Deere tractor. So the problem is with their lift cylinders for their three point hitch on the back of their John Deere tractor. Said they couldn't get the cylinder off. I said, well, you know, that's not a big deal. You got one pin out. There's a good chance we can take that cylinder apart and just leave it pinned to the tractor. Let me pull this rod out. And the rod is almost as big as the barrel. Now, on most of John Deere's, there's a number stamped on it. This says Weber Hydraulics AL80704 and some more numbers underneath that. That AL704 is the part number of that cylinder. The top pin came out fine. Had a keeper bolt that went through there, a keeper pin that dropped through there, kept the pin from coming out. The bottom pin, now the, the customers did this yesterday, he pulled the keeper pin out, but you put a pipe wrench on that and it will not and hardly budge. But he says he has got it to turn, but I just put his pipe wrench on it. I can't hardly get it to budge. This cylinder is called a displacement cylinder. It's got one line going to it. There should be a seal between it and the rod, the big thick rod here. So the only seal should be in the gland. And the way that works is hydraulics is going to apply pressure in all, equally in all directions. So if it's 3,000 pounds of hydraulic pressure or whatever ever it is coming off the machine, this piston floating inside there's going to have 3,000 pounds putting on this direction and every other direction because it's there's no seal on it. But if it only takes 1,200 pounds to push this lift up, then the piston itself is going to come up and travel up so that's called a displacement cylinder to take the piston out you reach through this hole here undo push a snap ring this ring wrote in this groove you just force this ring up out of here it'll just drop and wind up laying in the bottom of the cylinder via the hole where the the hydraulic fitting goes to and it'll just drop back into the bottom of the cylinder there now these seals are disintegrated there's nothing left to them so I have to pull the old seals out they're just going they'll just break apart when I start prying on them and that's where using play-doh and the likes a pile of old seals up in here pieces chunks and that's where you can lay play-doh in the the groove where the seal is supposed to ride and get your measurements but on the gland seal inside the gland where you can't tell how far it's machined for the outside diameter of that seal there's a little trick and that is this play-doh so take this and mush it into your groove inside your gland and one day I, when I'm repacking one, I'll, I'll do a video on it. And then peel the Play-Doh out and take a pair of um, calipers, dial caliper, and measure that thickness of your Play-Doh times two added to the rod diameter. So let's say that uh, Play-Doh Play measured out 3 16th an inch. Then, and the rod was an inch and a half so it'd be an inch and a half it'd be three sixteenths times two which would be three eighths it'd be an inch and seven eighths i think so now i know the inside and the outside diameter of that seal and i need the height of the seal the seal height is if you lay the seal flat on a surface the height is how much it stands up and you just take the same thing you can measure off the play-doh that you squished in there and um whatever that height is so it's a the rod times the, the inside times outside times height now you got your sealed now you got your sealed dimension so as of right now <clears throat> we probably won't have to do that they should be bringing me new seals the old seal is just breaking apart rotten typical very typical Okay, this is actually where 
my video footage ended. And I'd like to apologize to you for that. The thing is that my customers were out there with me most of, a lot of the time, and I did not shoot footage when they were there. And I'm just not comfortable talking to a camera while someone's standing there looking at me. And also, they were there because my back's been messed up for a while, and, and they were just kind of giving me a hand. So anyways... The rod goes back together just like it came apart. You put your seals in. You lubricate the rod. You shove the rod back into the bore. And then if you want to, you can pry that snap ring back on to the end of the rod. John Deere did tell my customers that they don't put the rod, the snap ring back on because of the mechanism of the three points not going to allow that cylinder to extend so far that the rod pops out. I've done one of those in the past, one of these cylinders, and I, actually at first I couldn't remember how it came apart because I just totally forgot about it. But as soon as I remembered or as soon as I was told how it came apart, I'm like, oh, crap, I've done that before. I'll leave it up to you whether or not you think you need to keep that snap ring on there. And this video is going to continue on for a few more minutes. Because while, while they were gone and I was waiting for parts, I shot some videos on how to take other hydraulic cylinders apart. And I just, I want to do a lot of hydraulic videos and, and I'll do these kind of videos separate later. But I'm just going to add it on this one if you want to continue watching it. But if not, you know how to take that cylinder apart now so you're, you're good to go. Remember, if you love life and learning new things, go aimless.com. Don't forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel. I sure could use your help. Thank you. Let me show you a different type of cylinder. This is your typical hydraulic cylinder. It's for this loader. It's got a, rod, a, a line on each end. There's a seal inside the gland which seals the rod. And this is called a wiper right here. This seal looking thing, this is not the hydraulic seal, this is a wiper. This wipes trash it's gotten on the rod keep it from being sucked up into the uh, cylinder so and so there'll be a where the end of the piston will be up inside here and there'll be a, probably two seals on it one face in each direction typically in a cylinder like this it's got a um a u-cup and that's a lip seal it's made to go in one direction and as pressure gets underneath that lip it pushes the lip out and it causes it to seal even better there's three <laughs> three general types of configurations of lip seals you got um, rod seals which will be lip sealed inside there'll be a there'll be a lip seal inside this gland should be if that's the type of seal they're using I mean there's many types and a lip seal for a rod specifically for a rod will have a lip on the inside of the seal and it'll be pretty much flat on the outside uh, lip seal for pistons will have a lip on the outside and be pretty much flat on the inside. Now, there's a universal seal, which a lips, there's a lip on the inside and outside. It can be universally used, and that's what I almost always used on things. There's a bunch of ways to take hydraulic cylinders apart. There's as many ways, this I'm, I really want you to understand. There's as many ways to take a cylinder apart as almost as there are engineers thinking of ways. So... <clears throat> Take this one for instance. This is a outside snap ring. You put it, you put your snap ring pliers in here, and you expand this snap ring. It will come off this way, and you'll find another snap ring, an internal snap ring inside inside this bore. So you'll you'll pull the outside snap ring, drive the gland into the bore far enough to get to the internal snap ring, pop it out, and then usually snatch on this rod that means that that piston come and hit the gland and keep hitting on it and drive this out then the piston and everything will come out some of them are internally threaded the gland has external threads and the cylinder has internal threads and they they thread together there may be in some instances on threaded ones especially where there could be a set screw drilled into here and it tightens up into onto the gland and sometimes there's a paint on it and you can't see it and you'll fight with the gland you'll put a wrench and usually if it's a hex 
if it's a threaded internally threaded gland there'll be either um, holes drilled into it for a spanner wrench or stick out far enough and have flats on it for a wrench or somehow or another it'll be made to be a wrench of some type to take it off but it, there may be a set screw to help keep it from accidentally vibrating loose over time but a lot of times there's paint on it and you don't see it or it's just hidden somewhere so look for it if you got a, a threaded gland because i have Way back, way back in the day, I've taken them out, and holy shit, this thing is tight the whole way. Uh, 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 and realize I just wiped the threads off with that set screw. <laughs> so make sure there's no set screw. Matter of fact, I make sure there's no set screw on anything I take apart, because like I said, see right here, I feel a bump. I know that's not a set screw; it's a piece of paint, but I make I make sure it's not. So you got internal threading ones that uh, I just told you how to take it out. You can have um external threaded ones which would be very obvious the 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 gland nut will go over it and what that usually is just there'll be the gland like this gland but then there'll be a collar that screws on to tighten it tighten hold that gland in and it too may have set screws so watch for that but there's another one that i was hoping to show you and the gland which is the piece that slides in that holds the seals has a square cut groove around it inside that would be in that would push up inside here and there would be a square cut groove in the in the barrel itself this piece and you line those two grooves up and there'll be a little notch out on the outside right here and there'll be a a ring it's usually square it's got usually got a hook on end it's kind of it kind of curves and, and there's a hole drilled in the gland inside that square cut machine surface I wish I had one to show you but this is important if you're gonna be taking a cylinder apart you have a little hook on that square ring and it'll drop into that hole and then there'll be spanners uh, holes for a spanner in the front and you'll turn the gland and it will suck that ring into the between into the groove that's created between the gland and the the groove in the gland and the groove in the in the barrel and it'll, you'll just keep on turning it. You'll suck that square ring all the way up into there until just a nub sticks out. Before you go wrenching on it, thinking you, you've got internal threads, you better look around the outside all the way around and check and see if there's a, not a cutout in there that would be where that square ring is. Because what you have to do is you have to take a little tiny fat screwdriver in there and find the edge of that ring. And you go up in there and you pull it out. And you start turning it counterclockwise. And you keep pulling that ring out. Just kind of lift it up to a clear. The the barrel's usually beveled a little bit, and it'll, you just pull it. And as you turn your spanner, you just keep pulling it, and then that ring will work itself out. And as you turn it, it'll just feed out. Then you snatch it apart. Now, then, the problem you have a lot of times with that, and a, and a lot of situations is the O ring will be back behind that on the gland. It'll be up inside here somewhere inside. As you pull that gland out, as you snatch on it or whatever, the O-ring will get caught in that square cut inside the cylinder. And you might have to reach in that hole there in that case and just grab it with the O-ring pick or something, cut it and pull the O-ring out and then snatch everything out. When you go back together with it, there may be there may be an adapters you can put in there. I've never had them. I pack grease inside that groove. And a lot of times that internal groove inside the the barrel the back side of it will have a little chamfer to it to allow the new snap ring new the new o-ring to push past it without cutting it so anyways that's a different type of cylinder this is a spanner wrench that goes the gland would have a hole drilled on the outside and it'd stick out far enough that you could you turn it spanner which wrench where the gland has the notches on it to grab hold This is a spanner wrench where the gland has holes drilled in the face of it and you just adjust these and drop them in the holes and then you undo the, undo the gland. Um, I've got another spanner, wrench, another spanner wrench like this which has different size pins on each end. So th there's all different sizes. This would be a tool specially made for 
putting seals in and you put the seal in this tool and you flip it around and it will kind of bend the seal to where you can drop it into the grooves internally and then pull the tool out and the seal will pop into place. Not necessary. I hardly ever use them. Hardly, hardly, hardly ever use them. I just work them in with flat blade screwdrivers. And just make sure I don't have real sharp flat blade screwdrivers. Blunt ones are good for that so you don't cut into your seal. A lot of time you pull seals out and they are totally disintegrated. So you're like, how do I know what size of seal I've got? Well, the, the seal's measured three different ways. We were talking about U-cups, um, the seals I was talking about a few minutes ago. You got your inside diameter. You need that meant to get that measurement. Just measure your rod. Okay, it's a inch and a quarter rod. Okay, well my seal is an inch and a quarter inside diameter. Outside diameter, that's a little harder because sometimes it's hard to get up inside the the gland or you know a piston would be easier to measure if it's a piston seal just measure the diameter of the piston um it'd be o-ring would be the inside diameter plus the thickness of the o-ring which would be the height so it'd be an eighth inch o-ring by inch and a half or whatever um, o-rings are used for seals for rods and pistons on cheaper applications a lot of times the tie rod cylinder with four tie rods that hold the the barrel end and the gland together and you tighten them up and almost a lot of cases not all of them it depends on the manufacturer again a lot of the seals in there are nothing but o-rings which makes it cheap to reseal but it'll probably become it'll go bad sooner while well, we're talking about o-rings there is a o-ring called a quad ring it's an o-ring with four sides to it almost like four little o-rings put together to be one o-ring so that is um quad ring and o-rings they'll give you more surface area is to, to seal against or no ring they're, they're good I use quad rings a lot um, and there's a lot to learn in hydraulics and I like hydraulics so I will sh share with you all I can with hydraulics as I go along 